Hey y'all, what is going on? This is Jesse Bells from the 19th hole. I've got the rookie refresh here for the upcoming Safari Sunrise Tournament. This tournament is being played on the Acacia Reserve Course, which can be found on Tours 4 and Tour 9 if you would like to get out and practice. The holes that you see in this video were taken from the Summer Major Tournament from last year. So the purpose of this is just kind of kind of refresh your mind and get you ready for practice and also the tournament starting Monday. So hole number one here, we're starting out with a par four, and we'll play a plus 10% elevation on this drive, which can be played with the quarterback or an extra mile. I choose the quarterback because of the, um, the accuracy in the club, and whenever I can use a quarterback on a drive you know, effectively, I tend to try to use it, especially in the rookie. So plus 10% on the elevation. We want to get this shot down to the uh, end of the second fairway. I do use a little bit of curl on this shot, um, using curl will definitely depend on the wind, and the amount of curl will definitely depend on the wind. So if you have a left to right a tailwind, you don't need as much curl as you would need if you had, let's say, a right to left tailwind. For the second shot, you'll be playing it with most likely, I would say, a long iron. I like the backbone here in the Rookie, uh, specifically because it does offer the best accuracy, generally, of any Rookie club at Rookie level. And I'm playing this shot about mid-distance. As you can see, I spot-checked my club to see if I was in min uh, or max or mid. And we're playing this shot at mid-distance. We're using some backspin. We'll play plus 10% for the elevation on this shot. And you just want to align this one at the hole with probably three to four backspin. Uh, and just allow just enough room for that ball to hit. And then hit that second bounce and then roll into the hole. So plus 10% elevation for this second shot. Unfortunately, we do hit great to the right, but as you can see, the, the pace of this ball is a good pace, and if this was on line to the hole, it would have hit that pin and dropped. So, plus 10 on the drive, plus 10 on the second shot. Hole number two is next, and here we're going to see our first par five on this course. Um, I would recommend playing the bounce over shot. You know, you will see other people in higher divisions try to go for the, uh, the bomb here. But in Rookie, I think just playing the, the bounce over shot is going to be the way to go. Um, again, I'm going to use the quarterback here. I will show you my opponent's drive as well using the extra mile. So it is possible to use the extra mile. But controlling your shot to the to front right-hand side of the second fairway is very important on this hole. So with the quarterback, we're basically just playing kind of like a one-to-one -one adjustment. So we're just kind of measuring... Uh, and visualizing our ball dropping about two and a half bars from our landing zone. I do use a little bit of curl to the right hand side here um, and you definitely want to be careful in the amount of curl here because you don't want to over curl it into that right rough but I use the curl here because of the wind I had and I'm trying to use it to kind of position my shot farther up into the right in that fairway. Now you're going to see my opponent play his shot with his extra mile, which is going to be played pretty much the same exact way that I played my shot with the quarterback, except he plays his shot with not as much accuracy in his driver, which is why I think playing with the quarterback is definitely the way to go. He uses a power three ball here. Um, you know, I definitely think this is a hole where a power three ball is useful, not really for the drive, but for the second shot. I like his shot. I like his setup. The only thing that I would add is a little bit of right curl to his shot because as you're going to see his ball is going to come in straight off the bounce and it's not going to quite go left um, I mean to the right on this fairway if he had had a little bit of left to right curl then uh, you know his shot would have gone a little bit farther to the right and I think he would have been overall set up a little bit better position for his second shot so I definitely recommend the big dog here um, you definitely want a wood with a good amount of distance on this next shot it's just a safe way to play this hole. You want to avoid having to overpower your shot, uh, you know, if you don't have to. We'll play plus 20% for the elevation here. And we're just trying to play for this shot to bounce and land just over the edge of that, um, that rough line. This is actually quite a dangerous shot because it's, it's not hard to mishit your shot and really land on the slope of this hill. If you hit the slope wrong, you will not bounce quite as far, and you will end up in the bunker. So make sure your spins are correctly uh, spun, and you do get that bounce to get over that bunker and on the other side of that rough. You go for the albatross here, but just being honest, this is more of a get your eagle hole, uh, and hopefully maybe drop the albatross type shot. So, 
plus 10% on the drive and plus 20% on the second shot. Um, I definitely recommend going with the power three ball as well for that second shot. Otherwise, you may find yourself in a position where you do need to overpower that second shot. Hole three is our first par three. And we'll be playing this one with plus 10% for elevation. There is definitely a rough bump possible here uh, if you have the sniper or if you want to try to go for it with the Viper. Um, but it's, it's definitely a risky shot, but it's a good shot. That if you want to go for it, you know, it's definitely there. You want to use a little bit of top spin and right spin and just kind of find that funnel to the hole. What I'm going to show you is the bounce over shot with the Viper. I think most people in the rookie will use the Viper. Uh, but if you do have a sniper, without doubt, use the sniper. Um, especially if it's level at least four and up, I believe. Uh, because the ball guide definitely will help you um, find that funnel and probably find the ace on this hole. This is definitely a very aceable hole. Uh, with the proper clubs. As you see, uh, it is a left to right slope on the green. And once you get over the lip of that green, it does go downhill pretty quickly to the hole. So you don't need a whole lot of speed coming off that fairway into that green. Hole number four. So we will play this one right here um, to the right hand side. Uh, you can also play to the left hand side. I just think playing to the right hand side offers you the best chance at the eagle. Um, I'm going to use the extra mile for sure because you do want a driver with top spin on this hole because you want to get as far up that fairway to the right as you can on the bounce. Uh, it's just going to set you up for an even easier shot uh, for your second shot. So we play plus zero percent here on this drive with the extra mile. And, you know, like I said, we're just trying to position ourselves up this fairway um, and on the fairway um, for the second shot with the short iron or even maybe possibly a wedge, depending on how far up this fairway you can get. I'd say 95% of people that play this hole will be playing with the short iron, though. The Hornet is possible. Um, I like the Thorn, but you could try a Hornet rough bump here if you wanted to. But I think the, the main play that most people will play this shot is going to be with the, the, um, the thorn. And it's going to be a shot where you use some backspin on the other side of this, this rough. And I would play this one at 0% elevation uh, in the rookie for sure. Use a little bit of backspin, aim the shot at the hole with that second and third bounce just short of the hole. Then you're going to adjust for your wind. And you adjust at plus zero percent elevation it is important to kind of find your club distance though so when you go to measure out your second shot find your min club find your max club and then measure it out from there we came really close to dropping this hole but this is definitely a hole that i think a lot of people will be dropping in the tournament hole number five our second part three i recommend playing this one at plus ten percent for your elevation the back bounce definitely a club that I would prefer to use, but if you want to go for the rough bump approach, you could possibly do that. Um, and I would say it would need to be the Goliath because that would be the only club with the top spin that allowed you to, to roll that shot out to the hole. So plus 10% here, we're playing with the backbone. And the tricky part of this hole is, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of ball guide uh, to the shot. So you really have to kind of um, you know, imagine the shot uh, and just kind of plan it out in your head how you think it's going to roll. There is kind of a little bit of a, a glitch on this green where if you hit it just incorrectly, the ball will take off and roll through the hole and past the hole. So trying to find that, that, that happy medium with your spins is definitely going to be the, the difficult um, thing about this hole. I don't, I don't expect it to be a hole that has a lot of aces, but it's definitely possible for sure. All right, hole six here will play plus 10% on the drive, although, you know, we're just trying to blast this one up the fairway. I would definitely recommend to stay to the top right-hand side of this fairway because then that's going to give you the best chance in a straight-on shot to the green. If you go too far up and left on this fairway, then you're, gonna, you're really going to destroy your angle to the hole, uh, and you're going to have to deal with that bunker uh, to the left side of that fairway up next to the green. So for that reason, we try to stay up and to the right. What that's going to do is going to leave us a much nicer looking second shot to the hole, as you all can see. And I would play this shot at 0% elevation. It looks pretty flat and doesn't seem like it's downhill or uphill. 
The Viper is what I'm using, but again, if you have the Sniper, I definitely would recommend the Sniper uh, because it is going to give you the best chance to drop the shot because of its ball guide and accuracy. So what you're looking here uh, with the Viper is for the second bounce to be up there along the fringe. Uh, and then you just kind of want to let that ball guide go towards the hole. And hopefully you get the good roll out. And I did kind of run out of time here when I was setting up this shot. So I wasn't able to turn my screen and properly adjust this shot like I normally would. Um, but yeah, 0% elevation. And aim it at the hole. Hopefully you can get it to drop. It's definitely a chance at the albatross for sure. Uh, and we came pretty close. All right, hole seven. It's our last par three on this course. From the front tees, we will play a plus 20% elevation with these lower winds. When you start getting higher winds and farther back, like the second tee, then you do play higher elevation. But for the rookie, we'll play plus 20% elevation here. Our goal is to get the second bounce about midway in that uh, fairway section towards the hole. Uh, what we want to do here is use our spins towards the hole. Um, in this situation, we're trying to aim like the right-hand edge of the hole. And then we make our adjustment plus 20% right there. And you want to hit the perfect shot for sure. This is a shot that a uh, great right. Playing it the way that I just played it could definitely be difficult and kind of scary. Um, I think I could have gone with a little bit more topspin on this shot. If I had a little bit more topspin, my ball would have bounced uh, a little bit better, I think, uh, and hit a little bit more towards the midsection of that, uh, that fairway section. All right, hole number eight, par four. This is a hole that is definitely very eagleable. You can definitely go for the green on this shot if you want to use a higher level ball, uh, especially a berserker. You can get to the green pretty easily, um, but you can also eagle this shot by playing it, you know, a little bit more conservatively as well. Uh, maybe you don't quite have the the ball stash that others do, and you don't, uh, you know, feel comfortable with that overpower shot. I'm going to show you how to play it with the quarterback. So I'm going with a katana ball. I need the katana for its side spin three. Uh, from there, we're just going to measure a one-to-one -one adjustment. Uh, and then we use about uh, almost a ball of curl here to the right. Uh, what this is going to do is going to bounce over nicely. It's going to leave us in a nice position uh, for our second shot with our thorn. Now we play plus 10% on the drive, and we play plus 10% on the second shot as well. Here, you're going to see me playing it with my thorn, which for me, I think in the lower levels, is the club of choice. Uh, once you start getting higher levels, and some people will make that switch over to the hornet. But I think lower level-wise, the thorn is just the way to go. Um, you know, especially with these lower level wind, um, you know, your, your adjustment is a little bit smaller when we're, we're making an adjustment with the thorn compared to the hornet. So a little bit of backspin here, aiming this one at the hole. You definitely want to know your club distance as far as your min, mid, or max goes on the shot. Uh, and then you just want to try to line this one up uh, and adjust for the wind correctly and hit the perfect. We played plus 10% on the drive and plus 10% on the second shot. For hole number nine, we're going to end this one here, playing it uh, to the left-hand side. Uh, we are going to be playing plus 10% on the drive, and more than likely you'll be able to fly this hole in the air. So um, I would say power three ball with the extra mile. You want to just get up as far up the fairway as possible. You know, I use a little bit of overpower. I don't necessarily think you have to use overpower on this shot. I would recommend using overpower to the point where you feel safe to hit you know, a pretty accurate shot. Because remember, lower level clubs don't necessarily have really good accuracy. So double great lefts and double great rights definitely would not be good on this hole. So overpower to the point where you feel comfortable. This second shot here um, is definitely a shot that I would recommend playing with a sniper if you have it. But you can play it with the Viper. You do want to make sure you land the shot you know, fairly close up to the edge of the, um, the rough line. I use the, uh, the yellow ring here on the, on the Viper to line up this shot. 
Definitely with the sniper, you're going to have a better ball guide and you're going to have a much better chance to sink this shot. I play this shot plus 10% here in this example, but I recommend playing the shot at 0% here. As you can see, I over adjusted my shot, landing myself farther back in the fairway than I wanted to, which causes me to come up short on this shot. If I had played 0% like I was supposed to, then my shot would have landed much closer up to the edge of that, uh, that fringe, uh, and I would have got a much better roll to the hole uh, and possibly dropped the shot. But as you can see with the Viper, there's not much spin adjustment required. Uh, the ball guide is not developed, so you know it's what you see. You got to kind of imagine that ball guide continuing to go towards the hole when you do set up to make that shot. Which is why I recommend the sniper if you have the sniper for sure. And again, that's where that power three ball will come into play. You know, having the sniper, which is a little bit lower uh, yardage-wise, like as far as power goes that uh, that power three ball will definitely help all right y'all thank you very much appreciate you joining me for this rookie refresh good luck to you all in the safari sunrise tournament remember tours four and tour nine is where you can find this course to practice throughout the weekend good luck to you all and god bless